name is Dave Wang. And I'm here to tell you a story. And the story is about data. It's also about big data. But most importantly, it's about it's about the uh, it's about what's next after the era of big data that we're in right now. Um, the story is divided into six, seven sections, and we'll start with the first one. Man's need to understand. Ever since the dawn of time, we've had this desperate need to understand. Ancient man looked into the sky and needed a story to explain what he saw. An earthquake, we needed a story to explain. Crop failure, we needed a story. It all comes down to we as a species have an innate desire to understand. As man has progressed, these stories benefited from better data. Instead of doing naked eye astronomy, the telescope allowed us to look into the sky and, and, and see better data. You know, with the advent of the spectrometer, instead of seeing a ball of fire in the sky, we saw a fusion furnace with, uh, that was made up of three quarters hydrogen, one quarter, uh, one quarter helium. Better data, better tools, that's why it's important. The next slide, please. So now we'll talk a little bit about the tools of the trade. Uh, there's three tools that we'll talk about specifically. There's SQL, the database, and finally statistics. Uh, next slide, please. Say you were the, the head of the Department of Motor Vehicles and you wanted to track things. You wanted to understand the relationships between cars and drivers and, uh, and driver's licenses. What you would do is you would set up a database. And what the database does, the fundamental thing that a database does is it sequesters data. So all of the data about a particular uh, driver would be stored in the driver's partition. All the data about a license would be stored in the license partition. And all the data about a car would be stored in the car partition. Next slide. So that's what a database fundamentally does. It, it, it sequesters the data. And so what SQL does is it allows us to ask the database questions. It says, hey, I want to know all of the drivers who, uh, who own a Toyota Camry and I want their driver's license number. This is what, uh, this is what SQL does. And so the next slide, please. The top is, uh, I think that's Boston Logan Airport. The second one is New York LaGuardia. And the third one is the Piedmont Triad International Airport. What do they have all in common? Other than, you know, Larry Cray, they all have statistics in common. And, and what I mean by that is what you can do, well, well statistics lets, lets us develop our stories about the universe in such a way that we don't need perfect observations. We can make assumptions based upon the things that we have. And so the things that we have here, well, the thing that we can figure out, according to you know, a piece of statistics called Benton's Law, we can determine the frequency at which of these which urinals are going to be uh, used most frequently. Uh, next slide, please. And, and so this is Benton's Law. So we know, due to statistics, that the very, very first urinal is going to have a usage pattern like that, the second, the third, the fourth, and on down the line. And so there's three tools that, that are, are used in, in, in working with data, and those three tools are the database, SQL, and statistics. Next slide. J is for jackass. And what I mean by that is my personality type, I'm an INTJ. Uh, intuitive, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but the most important thing is the J, in my case, stands for jackass. And the reason why is, is because it's because you know I, I, I kind of take counterintuitive views and you know I take all the data and, and the, the opinions I pass it back, you know, usually aren't quite popular. And the, the opinion that I want to pass it back to you guys right now is there are limits to us as human beings. And I just want you guys to recognize them before we start making these big proclamations about data, big data, big answers. Next slide, please. What do you guys see? You know, everybody in here sees three pills. Next. Now, five pills. Now, many pills. What's the cognitive, well, where is it that, that we stop seeing discrete sets of pills and start seeing many? Well, the answer isn't as high as you think. Next slide. Uh, it, it's, it's, can you go back one? It, it's seven, you know? And so any, 
any number, any set that's larger than seven, we stop seeing it as a discrete number, but we start seeing it as, as many. Next slide. And so in the universe where we have tons and tons and tons and tons of data, I mean, we, we are limited by our cognitive ability to just see seven things. Um, next slide, please. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the dunning curve effect. And what this says is, and you know, it applies mostly to Westerners. Um, it, it says that we as Westerners have a predetermined notion that we're smarter than we actually think we are. Like, I have a company, and my company uh, knows about what America eats. You know, if you go to a restaurant, most likely that data is going to end up in my database, and I'm, I'll be able to do all kinds of magic against it and, you know, get big insight. A couple of months ago, my stuff started to explode. I mean, people were drinking at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And I thought things were blowing up. You know, I, I had no clue. I checked the sequel. You know, I have a beautiful model. It, it, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It, it's, 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 it's very, very bright. And, <laughs> and, but the problem was, it was blowing up, and I had no clue. Well, you know, this jackass did not understand that the World Cup was going on. And due to the time differences, People were going to these restaurants and they were watching the games and they were getting hammered early in the morning. <laughs> and my models blew up. So one of the things that, that I, I want to tell you guys about is, you know, anybody who talks about data, just make sure you remember we're not as smart as we think we are, right? Okay, next slide, please. Holy shit, Batman. <laughs> this is the only way that I know to explain to you guys What's going on with the data? My God, the next slide, please. It's all exponential. I mean, YouTube is loading, what, 24 hours of video in, in a single minute. It, 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 every time the Large Hadron Collider goes, it's, it's what, 15, uh, 15 million uh, geeks, uh, you know, every run? It's like, my God. I mean, the, it's huge amounts of data. It totally blows my mind. But what does that look like? I mean, hell, I'm, I'm, I'm a jackass who can only see up to the number seven. And so here's a visualization that will actually show you what's going on. Next slide, please. Now, these are all relative. The very, very first data, uh, the very first data visualizations that, that you see is, is from the dawn of human history to about 1990. That's how much data we have. For the second one is where we are right now, and the third one is this is what this is what uh, 2012 represents. I mean, it's like I mean that is the scale of the data. That it's it's a holy shit uh, Batman kind of thing. It, it's, it's it's just enormous. Okay, the next slide, please. I have a long tradition of uh, embarrassing my family. And so with that, you know, I'd like you to meet my aunt. I mean, she's a really, really nice lady. I mean, she's a super lady. She lives in Vegas. Two kids, just uh, enormously, I, I love her to death. And so with that, you know, I'd like to introduce this section of the story. And uh, the section is called, If my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have this clear rule that defines you know, the differences between my aunt and my uncle. What's the rule that defines the difference between data and big data? Well, data, next slide please. This is data. You know, it, it works well. Here's the car license driver database. Everything is working just fine. You know, the linkages are maintained. I can use SQL to query and, and extrapolate insight from what's going on. But what happens, next slide please. Is, this is a, a data visualization of the millions and millions and millions of transactions that are inside of, of, of my database. To establish linkages between all of that, you know, it, it's not a tractable problem. It, it starts to break the traditional tools that we use, like databases and SQL. So we have to use other things to manage data sets that are, that are huge. And so the difference between my aunt and my uncle, you know, obviously you guys know, you know, no ball balls, but the difference between data and big data is the ability to query insight from, uh, from, big, from data. It starts to fail once you get to, once you get to the era of uh, big data. 
The next slide, please. Tools of the trade, part two. So we talked about the traditional tools. We talked about SQL. We talked about statistics. We talked about uh, about database. Now we're going to talk about some of the some of the tools that we need to manage big data. And we'll talk about scalability. We'll talk about uh, vertical scalability and horizontal scalability. Vertical scalability. If we needed to brew a thousand cups of coffee, vertical scalability says, "Hey, let's get one pot that's a thousand cups and brew the coffee." Next slide. What vertical scalability says is, let's get 100 pots and brew it 10 times. And so you, you have many pots, you still get to the same thing. You get 1,000 cups of coffee. Next slide. And so this is what it actually looks like. This is a, a data representation of, of a big data model. And for us to manage this beast on a single machine is a very difficult task because there's limits to how big a small, you know, one machine can get. And so what we do is we divide and conquer. So next slide. So this is a representation of that same data model handled by four machines. And so if we extrapolate it from there and take it to next slide, take it to thousands and thousands of machines, what we're able to do is divide and conquer problems that were not tractable using a, a vertical scalability solution. Okay, the next slide. From here, we'll talk about what's next. And what's next is we're in an era of big data. We're in an era where data is exploding and exploding and exploding. But what is next? Well, you know, the thing that I posit is the next round is something I call big answers. And, and there's some characteristics of big answers. And those characteristics are the data is timely. The data is more than just numbers. The data is pulled from multiple sources. It's accessible. And the consumer doesn't have to be a human being. And so let's talk about the first. The data is timely. An example of data that is not uh, big data are economic statistics. I mean, these guys, uh, it blows my mind, uh, you know, the 19, well, it, it just blows my mind that these guys provide revisions to the numbers that they already announced. You know, if I did that as a business owner, I'd go to jail. You know, but, 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 but the fact of the matter is, that's an example of data that, that, that's not timely, so it's not a big answer. The second is data is more than numbers. Typically, what people do is, is, is they put numbers, they, they use a database like Excel. You know, they, they, they just put numbers in there. But as we advance, you know, instead of just being numbers, the data that we're going to capture, manage, and store inside of the database are, are going to be binary objects. You know, it's going to be video, it's going to be audio, well, with all of the, the traditional uh, data models. And so it, it's going to be uh, more than just numbers. Thirdly, data will be pulled from multiple sources. And so what I mean by that is the bane of our existence as, as data professionals are silos. We hate silos because it's very difficult to pull data from, from multiple silos. It's very hard to get access to data from multiple silos. And so an example of of what's going to be happening is we're going to be able to get data from Foursquare, the geolocation stuff. We're going to get customer loyalty information from a different different company, uh, profit streams. We'll be getting consumer preferences from Facebook. We'll be getting you know the actual consumer data from from my my uh, from my database uh, at Data Group. And we're going to pull all of those things together in a non-traditional way, and that's what uh, that, that's what's going to happen in the era of big data. Data is accessible. What I mean by that is, 30 years ago, desktop publishing was something brand new. You know, it was very, very expensive and wasn't available. In the era of big answers, what's going to happen is the insights that only big companies have are now going to be uh, available straight to the consumer. And finally, number five, the consumer doesn't have to be human. Right now, data is consumed only by humans. You know, we, 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 we get insight, turns into actionable items, and, uh, and that's what we do with the data. In the future, we're going to get things like cars that drive themselves. There's going to be a feedback loop on the, on the vision system for the data, and we're not going to necessarily be using it. Something else is. And uh, that's, uh, that's the, end, the era of big answers. You know, I'm really, really excited about, the, about data, big data. And, uh, and the new era of big answers, and uh, in the words of, of the immortal Adam Carolla, mahalo. Thank you.